All right. What's next? Layla. Um, so here's a bunch of pictures and videos that Duncan has uh, has sent us. We, we tend to be in pretty good touch with them. Um, and they're doing, they're doing, they're doing pretty well. Duncan has started a job. He's in a cafe. Did I tell you he had to interview in French? And the cafes, everything is in French. So he has to communicate entirely in French. So I'm, I'm super proud of him. I mean, not only is he already is he already throwing down Italian, now he's throwing down French. He's trying to learn some Dutch. Uh, and of course English. So um, I mean, it's pretty cool. Uh, I, I'm actually... Really anxious to find out, you know, in two more years or three more years, what Layla's language skills are going to be and what language they're going to be in. Um, but they're going to be coming, hopefully, we haven't heard for sure yet, sometime in July, like um, the middle two weeks of July. So um, we're really looking forward to that. You know, I haven't seen, I haven't seen them since last July. So Layla will be over a year when she gets here, um, but we do we do a lot of um, FaceTime and Skype with them. Um, so that's you know so that's good. Um, one thing I and I think I you probably remember this. I used to sing songs to Colleen every night. And I had a whole like list of songs that I would sing to her. Uh, so I'm gonna digging those back out. I'm gonna sing those to Layla when I see her. So I'm excited about that. Um, Colleen's track meet. So here's the video of Colleen's um, tra most recent track meet. So she was running uh, 100 hurdles, 200 hurdles, and she was doing long jump. Um, so I've got some super slow-mo video of her doing long jump and, and doing hurdles. I kind of, the video for the hurdle sucks. So hopefully I'll make some better stuff. She has, she has a meet on Monday, so hopefully I can get over to that and make a better video. Uh, anyway. Um, it was fun to watch her do this stuff that's not just a 5K, you know. Um, and I figured, you know, um, the cross-country coach wants any of the cross-country kids who are in track to be doing, you know, the distance track stuff. And it's like, you know, forget that. Why don't you do something fun? You know, throw javelin or do long jump or do pole vault, you know, something interesting. Do high jump. Um, anyway, it was fun to, um, I really enjoyed watching her. Uh, watching her compete. So, oop. Okay, uh, next topic, uh, open water swimming. So I have been swimming quite a bit. Um, my swimming schedule has been thrown off because of golf. Um, my, so I haven't been swimming in the pool a whole lot. But what I have been doing is been out open water quite a bit. Um, I did go out this past Wednesday during a thunderstorm. It was awesome. I mean, just the waves, the wind, thunder, lightning, pounding rain. Um, for me, that's a good time. Um, and, uh, um, you know, everybody complains that I'm going to get struck by lightning, blah, blah, blah. But honestly, I can't find any, any information to support the fact that I'm at a greater risk of getting struck by lightning in the middle of a lake than I am anywhere else. So I'm just not, I don't know. I, I think people are so irrational and I'm not saying that I couldn't. I just think that it, you know, for most of them, it's just a knee jerk reaction. Oh my God, it's. There's, there's lightning. We, we better get inside. You know, it's just like, God, first of all, what are the odds of getting struck? Even if you're out, even if you're out under a tree, whatever, what are the odds? Pretty slim, right? So it's even less odds in the lake. You know, my biggest concern with swimming during a thunderstorm, especially around here, is getting hit with hail. Um, that concerns me. Um, also having a tree blown down on shore that falls into the lake, that concerns me. Of course, that's an easy solution. I just swim farther from shore. Um, and then I went out on Thursday again, and um, uh, Thursday was uh, was cold. I went, I swam, I don't know, 4,000 meters or so, and it was just chilly, man. The water's still kind of low 60s, high 50s, and, you know, um, I just came out of it. I wasn't shivering, but it was just like, I just was, I don't know, just cold. You know, I went to Heidi after to get some food for dinner, and it's like, you don't realize how friggin' freezing grocery stores are until you're already cold and you walk into one of those. So anyway, um, open water swimming is good. Uh, we're supposed to be swimming a big long swim tomorrow, but um, 
honestly, I want to work on Colleen's bedroom. So I'm going to do that instead. Uh, Marshall's graduation party. So here's some uh, video and pictures from Marshall's graduation party. Uh, this is the first party we've had. I mean, obviously, we didn't have one for Galen. Uh, Duncan, we didn't have one. Um, but, you know, for Marshall, we wanted to have a party, and he was cool with it. So your typical graduation party, we invited people over. Um, it was nice. It was actually a beautiful day. Uh, we had, you know, a lot of nice people. Uh, not a lot of his friends. You know, a couple of them, but not a whole lot. So, but, you know, you realize that graduation parties are really for the parents anyway, right? So, um... Um, oh, you know what? One quick word back to Marshall and Isaac's Odyssey. One thing that I think is so cool is that they're going to be staying with some of the same people that we stayed with. When they go and stay with John and Patsy, when they stay with Teresa, um, that's pretty cool. I just, I love that. I love that. So, um, food scapades. So I've been doing some cooking as of late. Um, so I made a, this, this first video and pictures is I made a dish called Boribori, B-O-R-I-B-O-R-I. It's a Paraguayan dish um, that has a cornmeal dumplings in it. Um, and I made it for William. So we invited William over and I made this dish. And yeah, he thought it was pretty good. Um, I made it with beef. Uh, he said they usually have it with chicken. So that's fine. Um, and um, and then I also had all these different kind of cooks. So and how, are you still doing Spanish? Have you kind of given up on Spanish? You Once upon a time, we're going to do it. Anyway, we had Coke Zero. We had Coke um, uh, Diet Coke. And we had you know, regular cook. So, um, I was calling those coca cero, coca flaca, and coca. So, coca flaca. Flaca is skinny in uh, Spanish. So, in case you didn't know that. Um, and then this next dish is one that I made for Colleen and me um, a couple nights ago. Beth is, Beth is down in Kenosha tending to her cousin again. But um, this is it's a lot of vegetables with these herbs on it and um, olive oil, and then you bake it, and then you pull it out, and then you mix it with the pasta, which you've just cooked, uh, and some tomato sauce and some cheeses, and then you bake it again, and then it's sort of, it's a vegetarian pasta dish, but I also did some shrimp on the barbie. So, uh, so that was good. Um, last thing, Colleen's room flood. So, we had a massive rain. I think we got four and a half inches of rain overnight. Uh, this was Monday night, just this past Monday, and um, crazy rainstorm. Uh, unfortunately, the gutters were clogged. All that water came pouring down, and right where the driveway meets the um, the entryway, the steps right there, there's a huge crack where the driveway has sunk over the years. So all that water flowed right down that crack, um, and then essentially I think it went through the foundation wall. I'm sure there's cracks in that foundation wall. Every, every foundation has cracks in it. So, and then when Colleen got up for school, she was walking across her floor and heard squish, squish, squish. And she thought, that's not right. So she goes walking back across it, squish, squish, squish. So there was actually no water on the on the top of the floor. It was all underneath the flooring. So, wonderful. So anyway, so we had to pull up. That's that old that laminate flooring, which I hate so much anyway. So we had to pull all that up, got rid of it. I had to pull the drywall off. Um, and you can see in this picture where you can see the new wall going in. But I pulled the drywall off below that shelf. And then I cut about a six inch strip all around the perimeter of drywall that had, you know, wicked water up. Um, you know, uh, so anyway, so um, um, I got all that pulled out. Uh, and so what we decided to do was, you know, the ceiling in the new bathroom, that, that sort of um, finished sauna look with the, with the tongue and groove pine. So I did that on the wall. Um, instead, that way if we ever have to pull it off, we can do that easily because I, I use stainless steel screws to put it in. And then on the floor, we're actually going to use an engineered bamboo flooring. So they're, they're planks that are about that, that are five inches wide. And I don't know what the length is, but, you know, so anyway, I'm going to put this floor down. And, and apparently this is one that you, uh, you glue down. So there's a huge bucket of adhesive that you spread with a trowel. So um, I'm going to do that tomorrow instead of swimming. Um, and then also, I'm finally getting around to putting new closet doors in. Um, I pulled these old hollow core doors out years ago because they were crap. Finally, I'm getting, I've, I've got them. We just, actually, Colleen and I spent the, the, the afternoon staining the wall and staining the doors, uh, getting ready so that we can, um, you know, put a finished coat of um, varnish on those. Um, so, um, 
Mm -mm -mm. Oh, um, one last thing. So that's, that's pretty much all, that's pretty much caught up. Oh, golfing. I want to talk about golfing. So two last things, golfing. So Mike and I started playing in, in April, and we must be 19 rounds. No, not 19 rounds. Um, 16 rounds into it, into the season. Um, well, 16 nine hole rounds, so maybe eight, you know, 18 holes. It doesn't matter. So anyway, um, Mike is already up, was up by six as of this past Thursday. So he was six rounds ahead of me. Now, if you remember from last year, I beat him by one. So it's like six rounds. I know it's only May. There's a lot of season to go. Um, and, I, and I've already felt like I was playing tentatively. I mean, it was just, I don't know what the hell is going on. So, uh, and especially off the tee box, Mike has been killing me. I mean, he's had 50, 75 yards off on me off the tee box, um, which is uh, which is tough when our when I'm hitting a second shot with a three iron, he's hitting a second shot with you know seven iron. It's a big difference. Um, but um, we we were playing on Monday, and I had won the front nine, uh, and we were even going into the 16th hole and I, I parred the 16th hole and I won the 16th hole. And so on 17, um, I get over the water in two and um, I get over the water in two and I'm next to the green and Mike hits into the sand um, in two. So he's in the sand, the pin is on his side of the green, so he short-sided himself, and he's in a deep sand trap, and the, you know, and the sand is not that great because it's wet. So I ended up chipping on, and so now I'm 10 feet, I'm, pin, I'm hole high, I'm 10 feet away, line three. So Mike takes his third shot out of the sand, chunks it, ball doesn't even get out of the sand trap. Takes his fourth shot, chunks it again, the ball just gets out of the sand trap in this deep rough. So literally, he's got like five feet of green to work with, and it's really hard playing that delicate of a shot out of that deep of rough. So now he's lying four in that deep rough, and he probably, you know, and I'm thinking he's not going to get within, he's not going to get within ten feet of this pin. He'll be lucky to get within ten feet. Um, and and like I said, I'm lying three, and all I have to do is win this hole, and I win, and I win that round, and I win that nine, right? So Mike is lighting a shot up. The funny thing about Mike is he talks a lot while he's hitting, but it doesn't ever seem to affect him. Um, so he's saying, yeah, I'm going to, you know, I think I'm just going to pull a uh, uh, Arnold or, a, you know, like a Ben Crenshaw or an Arnold Palmer here, and I'm going to, um, I'm going to just sink this. And he, and he hits it, and the ball pops up, rolls, 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 hits the pin and goes in for a five. I mean, unbelievable, unbelievable that he made that. So now I have to make my putt in order to win the hole. So I hit my putt, and I send it eight feet past. I miss. I send it eight feet past. Now I'm eight feet away, and I have to make this putt just to tie the hole. And um, I end up, you know, I was so thrown off by him making that. I ended up hitting the ground as I'm coming forward with my putter, hitting the ball and double hitting the ball. Terrible. So now we go to 18, we're even. And I, and he hits this drive, it's kind of a weak drive, but he, but he gets over the water. I hit this drive that's absolutely, I mean, it's the best drive I've hit all day long. Unfortunately, it was too good. There's no way we thought I was going to hit it into that hillside from where I was. I put it on the hillside. It was just like, I just couldn't do, it couldn't do anything right. Anyway, it just, he ended up winning the hole, winning that round, and it was just so depressing. Um, but it was just, I, I mean, I had to give kudos to him, you know, for making that putt on 17. I mean, making that chip on 17, it was just incredible. So anyway, so we went out on Friday. It was, uh, it had been raining, kind of like I told you, we had a ton of rain. A lot of the course was flooded. Uh, it's just him and me out there. It's like 45 degrees and super windy. And there's nobody else on the course. And actually, I played really well. I get, I don't know, I think I had like six or seven pars and a birdie. I had this 
this uh, approach from 190 yards that I hit within literally within six inches. It was it was pretty cool, um, and uh, and I was driving really well. And then on the back nine, so I won the front nine. So on the back nine, Mike wins ten on this 30 foot putt. He wins 11, and I pretty much just screwed the pooch on that one. And he wins 12, which I also screwed the pooch on that one. Then I win 13. I win 14, I win 15, now we're even. So now we're back even again, going into 16. Um, we're both on in three, he misses his putt, and I make this 15 foot putt to win the hole. Awesome, so now I'm up by one. So we're on 17 tee box, elevated tee box, and I hit this absolutely mammoth drive. And I'm still a little bit on, on a side hill, but I'm, you know, 130 yards away from the pin. And and he ends up getting so rattled that he hits his ball clean through the trees to the other fairway on the other side of this hill, and then ends up putting his next shot in the water. Um, even though I chunk my second shot, I get you know just off the green in three and was able to win that hole and win it. So um, it was pretty good. So anyway, that's golf. Um, um, I'm still really enjoying playing. It's sort of like when you're walking with Scott. Um, I really enjoy being out with Mike. Even though we're competitive, we're not... Um, we still have great conversation. We enjoy each other's company. Um, and it j I think we just enjoy being out. I mean, in all the weather. It's just, it's a beautiful, it's, a, you know, it's not like we're playing any, like a different course every time. It doesn't matter. We're playing the same course. And there's just some deeper appreciation by doing that that we've developed over, you know, over all the time that we've played together. So, um, okay, last thing I need to talk about, and probably the most important thing, August. You wanted to know about my August schedule. Okay, because this is for your return trip. Um, August is interesting. So you think you're going to be coming um, like through on August 10th or so? Okay, so here's what I've got in August. Um, on August 5th, let me pick my up, August 5th, um, we have to be up in the cities for a... Um, what's called a rebound weekend, and this is rebounding from from Preston's trip. So we're going back up, and, and this is part of the training, the post-trip training on um, reverse culture shock and how to deal with it for both parents and for kids. So we'll be there. That's the uh, 5th and the 6th. Um, and then the 7th, 8th, and 9th, that's Wednesday. The 10th, I think you mentioned August 10th. That's actually the day Sonia arrives. Um, in Minneapolis. Um, Sonia is the Finnish exchange. Did I tell you we're getting a Finnish exchange student in Winona, um, which is really cool. Sonia Lai Tamaki. Uh, so anyway, Sonia arrives on Thursday, August the 10th. Saturday, August the 12th, is the Minnetonka 10-mile swim race. Um, you know, if you were going to be in town for that, you could actually kayak for me if you were interested. Um, what that means is we have to go up Friday night, and then the race of Saturday will be back Saturday, you know, midday. Um, and then Monday, August 14th is when I start. Um, no, I really don't do anything Monday, August 14th. So anyway, so that's what I've got going in August. Um, so um, if that works for your guys' plans, great. You are certainly welcome, even if we only get, even if you come and just stay overnight. And we get to see you because there's stuff going. That's fine. Um, you know, it'd be great for you to actually come through and see Preston. Um, and it would also be great for you to meet, um, you know, to meet Sonia. So uh, you're always welcome. And I guess this is 38 minutes, 12 seconds right now. So obviously I'm going to break this into a couple of maybe three videos because this is long. Uh, and um, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Be well.